you know, my understanding nowadays is as an energy healer is that, you know, uh, it's not just about a sore thing or a, or a, or a, you know, it, it's so much more, it's almost like purification or removing noise or, uh, uh, cleaning up the signal, you know, and straightening the pipe. And I'm coming up with all these analogous kinds of like ways of sort of um, talking about healing now, and especially like looking at the three body schooling model that Barton offers an initiation into hermetics, you're essentially healing the body, uh, even though it's functional, you're kind of denoising it in a sense. And uh, Victoria, I would love to hear about, um, you know, your sort of view on healing from a hermetic point of view. All right, go with me first. So I'm going to kind of talk to this from, from a metaphysical perspective, too, because that's kind of what I'm familiar with, um, but I'll also put it within a hermetic framework. So you have the different levels of reality you have to work with. So healing is multifaceted. You have the different levels of reality. You have the source of output. You know, are you channeling healing through your hands? Are you channeling healing through your mental body? Um, also, where are you injecting and working on the healing? What, is it psychological? Is it emotional? Is it uh, physical? Um, and as you mentioned, kind of the noise and signal, that's a great point, too, because you have to understand how different noise have different frequencies. So say I had a deposit of something bad in my arm and it has kind of a chaotic signature. So understanding how to work with energy and change the frequency of that energy then is going to restore and reset harmony with and wherever that is causing an imbalance. So it can get very microscopic when you do healing and also assessing where is the healing needing to be done and what kind of uh, tool needs to be used for this healing. You know, for example, um, you know, putting a, a ray of golden light onto something might not necessarily heal, heal that. Say you're putting it into someone's aura, you know, that might help kind of reset the framework of some things. But maybe the source of the healing is, you know, there has to be psychological work or astral work if it's kind of emotional based or if it's like trauma based, it might be uh, left signatures in the physical body. Like you hear about some people who you know, they might be getting a massage and then all of a sudden start crying because they stored energy somewhere in their body. So there's all these different modalities you can use for healing. But if you are a Barden magician, you can really develop your re repertoire of techniques, you know, understanding elemental compositions, different planes of reality, vital energy, being able to work with the magnetic and electric fluid, um, applying light to the healing, um, that's assessing also through your clair senses, um, where does the healing need to go? You can work with different spirits um, from PME that may be able to assist you if you want to work with them as well. So that's all I have on that one. Oh, man, that was great. Thank you. Yeah. And like, I must say, just quickly from my own point of view, too, you know, starting with just sort of like all these different sort of modalities that especially like, say, something like Reiki, which is like, there's like one particular energy is generally referenced. And then you go through Chinese medicine, and then they break it into, you know, you get more granularity, as you keep exploring it. And so um, more options, you know, more tools for the bag. Uh, but uh, Michael and Manuela, I'd love to hear your um, uh, take on this. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I do agree with Victoria. Um, there is, yeah, obviously I come from the shamanic background and then uh, got into Baden's work and to the hermetic side of things. So in my practice, I sort of like combine everything. <laughs> and um, yeah, watching other practitioners, other techniques, everybody sort of like has a different approach to to the healing the way they do the healing uh, and also the area they work in so some people obviously work more in the astral body more in the mental body um, other people bring in beings um, but personally what i find the most effective healing is when literally i don't do the healing like in generally i don't do the healing 
I just channel it through. But the healing needs to take place in, in all the bodies, in all levels, and also almost like in all time frames. It literally needs to take place everywhere that's involved with that person. And you have, you know, you have the karma involved, you have the, the ancestral line involved, you have um, the physical involved, like there's so many things that play a role with the healing for the healing to be effective and permanent and everything is energy so you're sort of like you know changing the frequency of the energy or you're taking the energy out um, to align that person to their true nature to their true potential or to bring them back to you know who they are their true connection and yeah, in, in my healings, I literally just uh, work with the, the soul family of the person or the spirit guides of the family and they do the healing. I let them decide what is happening and I'm just sort of like translating. Um, obviously, yeah. I'm very clairvoyant, so I see what is happening, um, what are they doing, um, and then get the person to just facilitate it by exhaling or moving or depending what is what is needed and i find that quite effective especially when there has been a sexual abuse um people that have seen a, a psychologist for 10 years uh, obviously they work on <laughs> on the mental plane with them but the energy of the perpetrator is still there and as soon as you remove that you take that out um yeah things change Oh, great. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Michael. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, that, that was beautifully said in my mind. Thank you too much as well. Uh, Victoria actually well explained. I was actually just going to use, uh, I, I generally had a very fast approach to healing from a very young age. And also when, with my background, I was, you know, cuts and burns and that kind of thing. I was exposed to a lot of um, physical damage around me as well. And when I started the work a long time back, it was it was phenomenal how quickly you could heal yourself. And then once again, with other people, it's, it's a little bit different. There's another thing about, you know, what they're eating. And also, once again, it could be karmic, as, as Manuel said about as well, or it could be in the energy field. One of the, the first really supercharged energies was obviously when I learned A, like Lou from the Kabbalah, uh, you know, we're taught that and got to really balance it. I still use that as well. It's one of the, the big issues happens on aircraft. When we're about to take off the decompression, a baby starts screaming. It creates this negative energy with a lot of people. This is probably one of my things. I'm just going to harp on this just so I can finish this. Put A, like Lou, just do that, uh, you know, like a real monk, like a uh, really powerful put that through you know obviously mental astral plane do that it's really good it calms the babies the decompression stops you know all the guys going shut that baby up you know mentally you can hear it you know obviously i'm sure you all do it just kills the energy of the plane you, you tune into the decompression that's going on inside the fuselage and anyway it, it's an oldie but a goodie it's one of the ones that it's obviously you know works through obviously we also get ourselves out of the way when you know high energy channel energy might be used or if you're going to change the frequency of water you know the vibration because water is once again one of the great healers you become that instrument that you can change even if it's tap water or something like you should be able to sort of do that or you know bless anything that's there just by your presence you know and obviously your other side whether it be you know your guides or any of the big powerful um uh, genies or principles that want to work with you that they'll, they'll just come in just step aside there little fella and away it goes there's, there's so many different aspects, like you say, it's like a multitude, depending on what's required for the job, you know. And sometimes there's people that just, they do not believe in this sort of holistic energy. They're so sort of tight and you know, you're doing that hard work on that's so boxed in. You, you're kind of in one way just only putting a, like an astral bandage on there. There's nothing you can do. Like, okay, if you're going to keep eating that garbage food and pouring in, you know, television into your head, you know, you're going to go the way you're going to go kind of thing. So... There's other ways you can just, you know, resolve situations in a home or, you know, harmonize situation or in a work confrontation too. So it's all different layers of healing. It's all quite elegant in, in the way that we have to approach it. Either get totally involved, you know, in putting the bandit in, you know, or pulling back and letting the big guns roll through, you know, so it's, you know, 
a particular light or a particular element or energy that's relevant to the situation. Ultimately, in hermetics, it's still going to come back down to the physical and material. It's great having it all up there. You might be able to clear it in the astral or the mental, or, you know, from the Akashic planes. But if, if they're not going to be the subject tuned to it, that's that's where it's going to, you know, it, the buck stops there sort of uh, approach to things. You can only go so far and then, you know, you have to move on. Oh man, thank you so much. Wonderful. These are wonderful responses, and uh, you know uh, what? What a what a what a wonderful uh, box of treasures for the audience. So please keep putting your questions through. Now we are uh, at the top of the hour here, but uh, I managed to uh, give everyone a bit of a probe and a nudge. So uh, we're going to do a bit of overtime. So if anyone in the in the in the group needs to uh, disappear early, just flick me a message in the private chat if you could, and I'll and I'll and I'll start initiating the exit uh, protocol. Um, but uh, Mr. Bob Smith, I'd love to hear your comments on this uh, question here. Yeah, um, for healing, one of the most valuable training techniques for a prospective healer I've found is the three transformations, because it very quickly teaches you what's a mental effect, what's an astral effect, what's a vital physical effect. And then you can dial in how you address it. So if somebody has some weird mental fixation on something, okay, work with mental energy. If there's a lot of sensation in, associated with it, okay, that's more astral. And if it's more vital in nature, say a torn ACL, well, okay, that's physical. Now, these energies, just like Michael said, propagate through all the different levels of reality. And if you work really hard with one, it can transmute down into another and help with a given problem. But pay attention to what the source of the problem is. Is it mental? Is it astral? Is it vital or physical? And then if it is, try focusing on that. So I'll give a brief story. I was in Afghanistan about 13 years ago. Ran into a gentleman, infantry officer. He had a 95% MRI confirmed tear of his uh, Achilles tendon. Been playing basketball, got hurt. Okay. They were trying to send him home. He wanted to stay with his men. Okay. So I started working with him. I gave him some very, a very basic energy technique to work with it. But I also gave him an herbal formulation known as bone knitting powder. Now, this is the formula you give people who have broken bones or ligament and tendon injuries. He went from a 95% confirmed Achilles tendon tear to 15% in four weeks. Now, this was in a 40-year-old smoker living off prepackaged MRE food, getting four hours of sleep a night. And when this happened, the supervising surgeon accused him of fabricating the, in the injury because he couldn't believe that something that would normally take six oh, months man. to heal was largely re resolved in about four and a half weeks. And I lost track of him after that. But the kind of point that I'm getting at is if you can identify the root source of the problem, mental, astral, or vital, then this allows you to dial in on a better treatment protocol for solving the problem. And again, you can overwhelm that by going really strong on a different level of reality and it will kind of propagate through. But what I tell people all the time is, you know, if you show up on my doorstep with a gunshot wound, for God's sake, go to a hospital. <laughs> you know, my waving your hands over you is probably going to help on some level, but you know, go get the bullet taken out and get the tissues sewn back together. And then we'll work on speeding up the healing process of that. Uh, and as, as some people here know, I was an acupuncturist and TCM practitioner for a few years. And you would frequently see people show up who were desperate, you know, that they had a problem and they, and they really wanted help. But they were trying to address it through the wrong modality. You know, if someone shows up and they have a severe case of schizophrenia and just being around them can be dangerous, we're not in an environment where the risk associated to you for working on that is a really good idea if you're the only person trying to help them. So, you know, don't try to, to smash that square peg into a round hole. You know, try to figure out the root cause of something and go at it from that direction. That, that's what I would advise most people with the healing process. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, 
I, I had a my, my I had a family member come to me. Had been t-boned in the back. He was sitting in the passenger seat in the back of the car. He's a big, stocky uh, weightlifter, bodybuilder fella, young dude, and he got t-boned. And uh, he came over and uh, he's like, "Oh, bro, can you do some of that healing stuff for me?" Yeah, yeah, sure thing, Cozy. And uh, he gets up and he's like, "Oh, yeah, man, this feels great. Oh, man, I won't. I don't think I'll bother going for the X-ray tomorrow. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, bro, no, nah, no. Nah. Go, go get the X-ray, right?" <laughs> And, and this is the thing this is like um yeah i mean these short-term kind of like uh very useful and surprising band-aids uh you know you still gotta you know these things can be uh limited in scope sometimes and we need to be realistic about it although hey i'm always open to surprises and i've got a whole list of very interesting um, anecdotes uh, from my time doing well, this kind of thing. i'll give you one last short story that people here may find funny. So I was in Thailand, all right. I uh, made the mistake of going to a vegan restaurant that had homemade yogurt, okay. Got a really bad case of dysentery from that, okay. So I started using the releasing techniques to make the problem go away. And for three weeks it worked. And every time I'd start to have a problem, I would do that, it would go away. And then one day I was in the middle of practice doing Fajan training with Mark Rasmus, and uh, I kind of lost my focus for a second, and I ended up losing a pair of pants. And so finally at that point, I went to the hospital, and they're like, they're like, yeah, idiot, you've got amoebic dysentery. Here's some antibiotics to kill the bug. So again, if you need to use a given technique to get over something long enough to get to help or, you know, what have you that's great but just like michael was pointing out if you're smoking you know three packs of fags a day and eating processed food your health is probably never going to be very good you might want to work on you know not poisoning yourself all the time and then you know you can kind of get around to actually getting better so you know always pay attention to root causes that's i guess what i'm trying to say